This is the second game played between AlphaZero and Stockfish that started from this position. You might well have seen the first one in the video if you want to click on the link up there. Um, so in the first game, Stockfish was white. And then to test the machines, the colors were reversed. So now AlphaZero is white playing from this position. And this position is taken from the Computer Chess Engine World Championship. It's one of the set starting positions. So the idea of the DeepMind team was to test uh, AlphaZero over a range of different fields. So sometimes when Stockfish had an opening book, sometimes when it didn't have an opening book, and also from set standard theoretical positions. So if you want the details of how this position arose, then I'd refer you to the other video, but let's crack on with this one. Alpha Zero with white, Stockfish with black. Now you might recall that B5 was played by Alpha Zero, and this was an attempt to, to, to seize the initiative, to get the attack straight away. Stockfish played in a much more modest way, playing b6, just preparing to bring the bishop here. But there's no, obviously no direct attack on, on white's king position here. h4 from alpha zero, carrying on on the king side. And now, absolutely typical of alpha zero's style, it wants to grab the initiative again. So it gives up a pawn, knight g5. Well, this really has to be taken because of well, threats here and, and potentially on h7 as well and f3. So knight takes knight, pawn takes, and queen takes pawn. So a pawn for nothing. Well, not quite nothing, of course, but yeah, a clear sacrifice. But white's compensation is obvious. This opens up lines, um, opens up lines here, that's one thing, having got rid of that knight, but also on the second rank. So this gives white absolutely beautiful coordination. Now at the moment, they're all on the back rank, but the thing is on the back rank, rooks and bishops are able to spring to life very, very easily and still exert great power from the back rank. But it's quite clear that white has the initiative here and it's not so easy for black. However, let's see what happens because Stockfish does try and hit back. King b1, very cool move. We've already seen this in the very first game that I showed uh, between Alpha Zero and Stockfish, where Alpha Zero, having given up a couple of pawns, just took a timeout and shuffled the king to the side of the board. So very typical of its style and kind of no panic. That's the other thing, it loves the two bishops and really wants to get those bishops working. c5, so Stockfish is hitting back. Bishop d3, attacking the pawn here, and well, if, if h6, then there's something to bite on there, so g6. But also, not a beautiful move because it weakens the dark squares, but not an easy position for, for black at all. Everything involves a compromise. Pawn takes pawn. Well, black has quite a choice here. Um, in the game, pawn takes pawn was played. Let's have a look at pawn takes d5. Well, quite simply, the queen would swing across and followed by rook h1. And that's nice. Or queen takes e3, again, rook takes h1, a rook h1, threatening mate, and bishop f2, and White's initiative is just fantastic there. So another alternative, bishop takes d5, but then the pawn could roll on in the middle, d5. Let's give up another one. And then bishop c3. And this bishop, without an opponent, there's no dark squared bishop to match that bishop. And for a couple of pawns, well, this is a dream attack on the king side. It really is. And through the middle of the board as well. Right, that's the position. Pawn takes pawn played. And e4. And the queen switched over to h2. So this clear plan of attacking on the h file. So black has to play f6 to defend along the second rank. 
And now f5. I, I think you know there are several ways to attack here, but f5 basically guarantees that lines are going to be opened uh, one way or another. So, for example, if black tries to close with e5, then g5, and the g file is going to open. If pawn takes f5, then the continuation I like is to do this. So g5 really has to be played now. And now bishop g3. So this bishop slices into the game beautifully, and you just feel at some moment black's position is just going to collapse. Um, rook h1, possibly, maybe e5 at some moment to, to get through to g5. It looks like a beautiful position for, for white. Okay, f5 played. e takes d5. Alpha 0 took the opportunity to open up the h file. Oh, here's a nice variation, actually. So in the game, pawn takes pawn was played. But instead of that, Let's have a look at this. This is the greedy option, but this loses in, in a really spectacular way. And now we can see the, the latent power of the bishops. Bishop b4, if that's taken, of course, queen takes pawn mate. So knight c5. We give a check. The king goes into the corner. And now rook h1 immediately is very good, but a really sneaky move is g5. The idea is simply to open up the king. Um, the threat is to take on f6, followed by g7. So something has to be done about that. So therefore f5. But now you can see this opens. Whoops, I've misfired. This diagonal opens. So rook takes d4, and very shortly bishop c3 is going to come. And black's king gets cut to shreds on the diagonals. So, in the game, pawn takes pawn plate and recaptured. And now rook h1. So the h file is opened. Threat, queen h7 and rook h7. So queen g7. Okay, uh, attack wave 1 has been parried by Stockfish. How do we make progress for white? And, and this next manoeuvre is really subtle. Bishop c2. Great move. Just one step back to make another forward and we get to this diagonal and suddenly black's king is feeling the heat. Instinctively with black, I would like to take off that bishop. Just give up rook for bishop and try to survive this one. But actually, it's horrible. After this, rook d4. Um, black's king is in trouble here. It's in trouble on this diagonal. Uh, there's going to be trouble on the central files as well. Um, horrible position for black. Still still lost. You notice how important it is that the king's on b1, by the way. Just nudging out of the way once these files open. Okay, back to this position. Bishop c2. Knight e5. Bishop b3. There we are. Beautiful square. And now we just want to take and, and come in here. And, horrible. So g5 tries to sort of block things a little bit. Bishop g3 first. It's a, it's a really nice move. You can see every single one of white's pieces is in play and the pressure is really on black and there's no real defence here. So for example if rook, take, rook f7, let's take here and e takes d5 followed by d6. It's too much for black. Knight takes g4 played. Attacking the queen, which came up the board. Knight e3 and rook takes d4. So again, threats of coming through here, but also that knight on e3 is vulnerable. So the king runs. Bishop f2. Attacking the knight. Now, if knight c4, then we just take on d5. And the threat's here and looks absolutely disgusting. Uh, must be winning for white. Uh, yeah, not to mention things things like uh, queen e6 as well. Uh, rook h8 played. But now this allows white just to exchange off into a winning endgame. 
because after this we exchange rooks and then we take the knight on e3. Now black is able to, to grab a couple of pawns but Alpha Zero had correctly assessed that this position is actually winning fairly simply. So rook a4 played. That's an important move, just weakening these pawns. If rook takes e4, then this is winning. I know it looks quite scary with these connected pass pawns on the king side, but actually, once the bishop enters the game, like this, then it controls these squares, and actually, the pawn is going to run very quickly. If necessary, the bishop can give itself up for let's say this pawn, and then white is ahead in the race on the other side of the board. Coming back here, rook a4 played, a6. Pawn taken on b6. And again, these pawns look very scary, but actually two bishops, they're too strong. Threat, check here, so the bishop drops back, and now the king just steps across. No problem at all, rook d8, that's a clinical move. Once the rooks are exchanged, then there is no danger at all, um, and, and the king can always just step across if necessary. But of course, but the bishops are simply too strong, actually. So let's just see the final few moves of the game. But this is just this whole end game has just been a mopping up operation against the two bishops and the king. Um, those pawns never get anywhere. And here. Uh, the game was concluded. Alpha Zero won that game. What a contrast in styles between this victory of Alpha Zero's from this position and Stockfish's victory from the same position. In both cases, Alpha Zero was really desperate to grab the initiative. And, and go on the attack and manage to coordinate its pieces beautifully, not just with black, but also with white. I think that position round about here, let me see, is a very good illustration of how you know white pieces are, are working together beautifully. Maybe maybe this is an even better illustration of, of you know white pieces coordinating wonderfully. Uh, whereas well, Stockfish just got blown away here. But the victory of Stockfish from this position, it was all about grabbing material and, and hanging on to it. And to human eyes, it somehow it wasn't, it wasn't such an elegant way of proceeding. However, it was effective. So what a contrast between the, the two machines. Um, if you want to check out the whole of the playlist, then click on the link up there and well you can see the game that I'm referring to that was also played in this position with colours reversed and see all the other games that I've been looking at between Alpha Zero and Stockfish. If you haven't subscribed then do click on the button down there it's free to subscribe and click on the bell for instant notifications when I post a new video and if you want to support us then check out the buttons up there um, on PayPal you can make a one-off donation or patreon.com powerplay chess and for a monthly contribution check out our rewards that we're offering thanks for watching